Hey y'all, here it is Tuesday evening. Me and Jordan playing with a little idea a friend of mine shared with me with an old pulley. Now it's a work in progress y'all, so. There's my sister brought that geranium uh, this weekend. Used to always be a couple sitting up on these brick pillars when Mima was here. And I believe we had some out in that old wash pot but uh, boy, it's hard to keep it watered out there in that hot summer sun. But uh, I'll work on getting another. Me and Jordan messed with it for a little bit, and it looked like two guys were working on it, so we stopped <laughs> and called it like that until we get us another hanging plant to put on that other side and balance it out. How's your week going? Hope it's a good one so far. Uh, we got after it today for sure. I brought the geranium back out. Um, we didn't quite we're not quite ready to pull our little tomato seedlings and things back out here in the in the air i did that about a month ago and lost all of them had to start over wasn't freezing but tomorrow's supposed to be uh tomorrow morning around 42 so we'll let that get past us and then we'll bring them on out today was the last day uh first week here of a uh, good planting schedule and uh so we got busy and Got just about all the crops in other than the plant starters. Y'all hear that? That means summer's coming. <laughs> Had to give these old onions and garlic a good drink today. We got a lot of rain coming this weekend, but these things are heavy, heavy feeders. Uh, I mean, they need a lot of water, a lot of nutrients, and we've been pumping it to them out of that chicken house with that nitrogen. So, uh, they, they're doing good. We got 20 eggs today. Yesterday, 28. How about that? Everybody's busy in the chicken house. Old Rooster Cogburn's running things. He's doing good. And keeping Pistol Pete and the ladies in line. But uh, let's see, one, 105 foot rows. We hand planted them. We got four rows of uh, cream crowder and four rows of purple hole. And. Um, I think it's about 165 hills per row, so <laughs> we've been some busy. But it's just right ahead of this rain coming, get them good and watered in. I uh, decided to invite the ladybugs for a summer vacation. Most of you that grow peas know that uh, aphids are the biggest problem you tend to have. And it looks like chickens when it comes to marigolds. <laughs> I figured that was going to happen. One of them got me. We set out about 50 little marigold plants that I had started from seed. Space them about every 15, 20 foot. It's going to be hard for y'all to see them on here. This is small. But the uh, reason we do that, marigolds, hey, you can eat them. Did y'all know that? Yeah, a lot of folks eat them flowers. They're edible. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but uh, I'm going to let the marigolds attract the ladybugs, and the ladybugs will keep the aphids at bay or so we hope. Try to limit that poison if we can. Uh, I grew up in fogs of seven dust. <laughs> any of y'all that spend any time on the farm have done the same. I think I set a world record, or an East Texas record this morning. What is it, April the 2nd? And uh, I harvested about 50 foot of cream crowder peas on April 2nd in East Texas. It wasn't edible. Well, I guess you could have if you'd soaked them. Yep, I got out here planting, got turned around, and I had a system. Everybody knows how that story ends. All good things start with somebody saying, hey, I got a good idea. But <laughs> I uh, was rocking along and getting low on peas. I would pretty much timed it out how many pounds I needed. And uh, I had two more rows to go. And I was about halfway in, and I, I, I dig a furrow ahead of planting them. And uh, I noticed I didn't have a furrow in that row. And I said, well, I don't know what's going on. Kept going. And then I noticed a, a little red pea where I was putting another one. I said, Jordan has got tricks. He didn't plant it this row, did he? But he didn't. I kept going. Finally, I figured out I'd planted two rows and I was back on the second row. So I had to go back and pick up all them peas so that I'd have enough to plant the other two I needed to plant. So I was picking peas this morning. They were pea seeds. <laughs> I guess that's part of being frugal. I've uh, learned that from the best of them. 
uh, both sides, grandparents they come up through the depression and you didn't throw anything away. Uh, Dad and I was talking last weekend ago or so. Uh, I remember because we had some foil left over and it was clean. And uh, I asked him, asked him, do I need to save it? And he kind of looked at me crazy. But uh, shoot, 15 years ago, mom would have made us save that foil. If you ever have to wash foil off, put it out to dry and use it again. <laughs> well, we didn't wash it. We went ahead and threw it away. But uh, man, I remember that wheel. I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have us some, some chicken and dumplings looks like there. I knew they would, but there's enough for all of us. They're kind of picking on the end of them rows there. But uh, got my potato down there to marigold. I guess that's not too bad. We got 50 more. <laughs> we'll let them. Let them eat with us, right? Uh, but this big garden is completely planted other than the tomatoes on the end. I've got about another week before I want to set those out. But we'll, uh, oh, they're about two inches tall. I need a little bit more growing before I put them out here in this heat. <clears throat> but peppers are rolled up. I put my cucumbers and squash in the ground. Old Farmer's Almanac said yesterday and today was the prime planting for the last week and a half so I had to wait till today to get it done but uh, we'll trellis these cucumbers when they come up squash I didn't put before heels of it in if y'all know anything about that yellow squash I'll have have it running out of my ears even with four heels but uh, it's good enough and I don't need no half acre of squash that'd do anybody a lot wouldn't it <laughs> but it's been a good day and uh, it's back to out of the garden and working tomorrow. So I had to make it make it count quick. Corn survived the little old frost this morning. Wasn't enough to hurt it. And uh, potatoes are good. Uncovered the few watermelons that we have up. But uh, spring is coming on strong. I was out there staring at that pecan tree a little earlier. And it's budding sure. So we'll be okay, I think, for another till fall for freezes. Some, something about, uh, I think, the middle of the month. Got a little Arctic blast coming in from Canada, supposedly, but that don't mean it's going to freeze, and I don't believe it will. But we, we're to a point where we can manage it if we need to. But, uh, beautiful day here in Texas, for sure. Chickens are happy, and I guess that makes me happy. <laughs> Find joy in the simple things, right? Our uh, Ben's Leghorn's about to have to make a move. They're about to outgrow their little accommodations in here. All their down is gone. And uh, see, they're coming up on five weeks old. So we'll, we've got about 15 or 16 in a, in a cage. Of course, it's snake proof. There's uh, They're all little leghorns. 31. And made it through all the, the sketchy time. Now we just got to save them from the predators. And I've been down that road, so I'll handle that. Hush. Oh, that thing just always a cackling. We're gonna put them in here, out here in the main coop. Separate them out about eight to ten a level until they hit that main yard in the back. But, uh, looks like all the bellies are full in here this evening, <laughs> and they're getting ready to, to bed down. I hear you, old loud thing. And white chicken got a vocal cord on for sure. Well, let me do a quick roll call. And uh, what well, in the world's worst about this? I laid the eggs down again. Good thing I come out here, ain't it? We'll do a roll call and call it the evening. Sunflowers are coming up. Won't be long, there'll be little plants. And, uh, look for that red clover seed now. I'm gonna save some of that and use that as a cover crop this, this uh, late summer, I believe. It really does good putting the nitrogen back in. I wish you looked at these things. I mowed the yard and they're all over it. Is that something? They just getting after it. <laughs> what you finding? Let's stay out of that garden. <laughs> all right, let's see who all's on here. We're gonna call it evening. All right, let's see if I can get my thumb to work here. There we go. There's uh, Joanne. Tuesday dance night. She's off to the to the music fest. All right, there's Patty. How are you? Corpus Christi's in the house with Sharon. There's my Aunt Pat. Oh, you got one of those rain gauges. All right. 
Yeah. Uh, I guess you went and saw my good friend Linda over at Texas Traders. Let's see, txtradingpost.com. That's right. And yeah, I'll plug that all day long. She's a good lady, does a lot for her community, and runs a pretty good old website. And uh, first class service, wins all kind of awards. Yeah, it's a cool little old rain gauge. I hope it uh, gets a little. Let's see, I, I guess it could be all right to get up to around San Antonio this weekend. That'd be a good rain if it spread it out over a few days. I may be out there in it putting those pepper plants in, depending on the, the severity of it. It'd be good to put it in. There's Steven down in uh, South Texas, Rio Grande Valley. All right, how are you, buddy? My buddy Brandon, I think he's up in Colorado these days. He was in East Texas for a while. Uh, life takes us different turns. How are you, Brandon? There's Mr. Bruce. Said, yeah, you're right, Bruce. <laughs> There's a farmer's market or, or something. Uh, I got a lot of harvesting ahead, don't I? I'm not sure if I know exactly what I got myself into. <laughs> We're going to find out. Uh, there's Dorothy. Yeah, Mary Gold's supposed to keep the deer away. I don't know if I've got enough of them out there to do that, but uh, we've got some, we got some plans for that. Nothing, nothing like shooting them. I ain't told about that, but we've got uh, uh, some contingency plans. I think we'll be able to coexist and manage too, right? Uh, yeah, sure, we have been busy. Sure have. There's Leanne uh, from Colorado. How are you? All right, yeah, Brandon, say hello over there from Colorado. <laughs> Allie, did I get you on that one? <laughs> a little early to be harvesting cream peas in Texas or anywhere in the United States at this point. <laughs> There's my good friend Ladine up in Grand Prairie. How are you? Y'all gonna have to come down here and help me to uh, pick these. Yeah, everybody's talking about marigolds in the salad. I guess I'm on, I mean, every time I walk by that mustard plant out there, when I'm not on the video, I can grab a leaf of it and eat it. I'm not scared. I guess I'm going to have to eat a marigold. I don't know about that. I might have to do that off camera on the first round. Might make a ugly face. I don't know. Yeah, an acetonium. Yes, sir. I was going to, I saw that in a lot of articles. I thought about getting a little bit of that. But uh, I turned Hudson loose when the, when the chickens are put up and it won't be a rabbit in 10 miles. <laughs> Let's see. There's Cheryl Swain, spaghetti swash. Uh, I'll have to look into that. I've sold a, a ton of them as a produce manager, but I've never grown any. Uh, they're all right. I'm, I'm not, uh, not a big fan of them. There's just about anything I won't eat except for liver. I don't really care for that, I don't think. I hadn't tried it, don't plan to. That's another story. Uh, yeah, Pat, you sure did. Um, I've, I've been known to do that here myself last summer. If there wasn't anything messy in that Ziploc bag, I'd wash it out and turn it upside down on the dish drain. But you know what? That plastic, even when it's open, that takes the longest to dry. Doesn't it? You ever wash the Ziploc bag? It seemed like it takes three days to dry. You finally just have to get a towel to wipe it out. And don't use a paper towel because that defeats the purpose because you just wasted paper on it anyway. That's another story, too. <laughs> you know what, Leanne? That's a good question. I was going to try to slip by with that because I have committed a felony in Texas when it comes to gardening. All this land and all this planting and all these seeds, and it hit me when I was rowing up for those cucumbers this afternoon, I don't have an okra plot. And you got to have okra in Texas. Thank goodness it's still a little ways away from having to plant that, so I guess we're about to lose some more grass out there. I've got to, I've got to till around the blackberries because we're still a month away from getting the well dewberries. So uh, I've already ironed it out where I'm gonna put it. I think I got a good spot in the sun out there. That'll uh, I got plenty of land. I just don't want to mess up the dewberries. Isn't that crazy? So anyway, why'd you mention that? I was gonna get away with it too. <laughs> no, you got to have some okra. So I'll have some too. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Dorothy. Full wax paper, twist ties, it's wasted nothing. I'm glad Memo didn't either because y'all, <laughs> me and a buddy of mine went in that, that cannon shed and there's a lot of old books and a lot of old progressive farmer magazines and uh, come across some Life magazines and yes, Saturday Evening Post. There's a Life magazine in there about the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 or three issue. Uh, it's a little, little tattered. 
rats had their way on a couple of them, but it's enough there to, to look at. That was sure, sure neat looking at those old advertisements of those cars in the day. And, uh, just a different world, wasn't it? I get tickled all these folks hollering about going green and, and all that. Shoot, I guarantee you none of them have ever had to put a, a brown paper grocery sack around a book to take to school. Remember, we used to get them from Brookshire's. They were already about fall. All of them would be, uh, let's see, Kroger, all in places. When you got bag groceries back in the fall of the year, most of them would have uh, the outline of how to cut it out to cover your book, right? And those were the best book covers. You could write all over that brown paper bag and design it. Yep, green. We've been green for a while. Pay attention to it. Wonder if they reuse their foil and Ziploc bags. They would if they lived in the country at Memo's house, I promise you. <laughs> they wouldn't need no mandate to do it. That switch would do that. <laughs> Let's see. Here I go, I'm getting off on another subject. Hermiston's in the house, double pea picking day, that's right. All right, David, that's cool. All right. Allie, run some steaks and plastic wrap, keep the critters out. Whew, I'm gonna have to have a lot of plastic wrap. A lot. That's that's a lot of garden out there. <laughs> we'll see though. Uh, there's Billy. How are you? And Leanne Forrester. Miss Pecan's from Texas. Well, they're out here. Come on and get you some. <laughs> hey, there's my Aunt Sharon. I did give that poor rooster a name, Aunt Sharon. I sure did. Ended up with, uh... so the story was, I got thinking about it, and Rooster Cogburn was a good name, but I, I didn't want to just jump on it. Then I got thinking about it. That was, a, of course, a lot of people played that character, but John Wayne did a rendition of that, and they called him the Duke. So my my thought process was, Memo's maiden name was Duke, so it all just kind of fit together. So it's Rooster Cogburn for that one. But I got two more roosters, one I didn't know about until uh, he was doing what a rooster does and wasn't crowing. I figured out that's a rooster, but uh, that was on the same day we found that little old pistol in the sunflower bed from somebody. I don't know where it came from. So I had to call him Pistol Pete, and we still got one pending. And uh, I'm kind of leaning toward Colonel Sanders on that because he's white, like you said. He's white, and he's a silky, and uh, Faith said he looks like a llama, my daughter. <laughs> and I guess he does. He's a cool-looking little old bird. He ain't very big, but uh, he keeps to himself and goes. Up. Maybe that's maybe that would fit old Colonel Sanders. He's scared to get around these chickens. He might fry one of them up, so they don't let him around much. But it's his choice. He stays out there in the hedgerow all afternoon. But uh, he'll come. He he was kind of hanging out a little closer this morning. I think he's starting to get used to the place. But, uh, these hens are twice his size, so I don't think he's got any dating in mind. They're just a little big for him. <laughs> Let's see, there's Gene. I'm running a little long. I'm gonna get off here. Uh, Martinsville, where Gene's at. And there's Angela Williams, how are you? Uh, Luke from Australia, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for checking in. And Rita's from Georgia, how are you? Uh, well, I like the sound of water running too, man, but not when it's on a meter. So I'm looking forward to that rain. <laughs> Janet's in East Texas. Uh, Karen wishes she was. And Jay's in Bahalia, Mississippi. Hope I got that right, Jay. Good to have you along. Kathy's in a, my old haunt, Trinity. That's a good place. A little old bitty town and uh, good folks out that way. Florida with Gail. Louisville has Vicky. How are you? Miss Misty's still in New York. Girl, you better get back to Texas. You don't belong up there. You get a nosebleed you stay up there too long. I'm just saying, you, you can. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but you might get a nosebleed. A little high altitude. Hey, Allie, how are you? Uh, Kathy, yes, I have planted squash. Got uh, about five, six hills of it out there. Jeans and Deer Park. And then you turn it inside out. Well, there you go. See? There you go. I should have known that. <laughs> uh, uh, I think I'm behind. I was kind of, let's see. All right. Jay from Mississippi. All right. I think that's all of it. Um, I'm going to get off here and and wait for the chickens to eat. They will not go to that roost till the sun sets. I tried to get ahead of schedule them. Try to get them up and they ain't going nowhere until they're ready. 
they're women, okay? <laughs> I guess that's how us guys are too. But anyway, they'll make their way in in a minute and we'll close them down for the evening. But uh, y'all have a good evening. Be the light. Make somebody smile. And, and uh, I guess we'll check in when the, the rain hits toward the weekend. I have a whole lot more green come this time next week than pea sprouts coming up, right? But uh, y'all have a good evening. Appreciate you joining in. We'll talk with you later.